for the next round of discussion, we have uh, Chitra Natarajan, Vice President, Fidelity Brokerage Technology, Fidelity Investments with over 25 years of experience. And alongside her, we have Asif Khan joining us, Head of Fidelity Center for Applied Technology, Fidelity Investments, uh, again with over 25 years of experience. Welcome, Chitra and Asif. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having us, Rishab. Hey, good morning. Yeah, thank you for having us. All right, thank you so much, Asif. Thanks so much, Chitra, for joining us. Before we get started and deep dive into the program, some mindset of how fidelity management and research, FMR as we call, has evolved into you know becoming an organization, fostering innovation. A uh, quick question to you, Asif. How I just want to understand from you how you define innovation at fidelity. Um, well, not too differently from how others would uh, define it. Um, we are a financial services company. Our uh, primary objective is to ensure that our customers, um, you know, reach their financial objective, their financial goals, right? Uh, so to that extent, um, you know, delivering great products with a differentiated experience and with high quality of um, efficiency and service levels, right? That's our primary, uh, you know, business mantra. And any anything that contributes to making that better is by is in a way defined as innovation internally, right? So um, that's how we define it. Of course, you have to be looking out uh, forward. Uh, what's happening? You know, uh, say in the next few uh, few years, you have to look around to see what kind of disruptions are around you, uh, what kind of competitors uh, that you're seeing, new or um, you know old, etc. But again, our primary objective is how do we help meet our goals, our commitments to our customers by way of great products, differentiated experience, and high service levels. Got it. Thanks so much, uh, Asif, for, for breaking that ice and calling all that. It's it's still doing the basic things that, that you're known for. It's still ensuring that we're still providing that value that our customers need, but doing as many uh, iterations in terms of thinking differently, still giving that highly differentiated product to ensure that our customers can make the most of it. Um, um, just just want to understand because you touched upon an, a, a thought process here that well that is the core mantra of what you do. Uh, we still need to be cognizant as to what's happening around. Uh, what's what's the future looking like, right? Uh, taking a step back here and asking in terms of um, the process or the intent, how has it changed in terms of? Uh, the past few years, because the past few years have had, it's, have its own fair share of, uh, you know, different incidents and situations that have happened. So how has this intent of still delivering value to your customers with differentiated offerings, uh, you know, that intent has evolved and how is the future looking like in, in this particular sense uh, of what everything happening about? Yeah, so um, I would say, again, in general, you know, not looking at a particular region, India or elsewhere, right? In general, uh, you know, the, at Fidelity, of course, uh, you know, we have a business to run, um, but there are some uh, centrally uh, mandated groups to look at um, innovation um, and a lot of research, right? We, we, we spend a lot of time researching on what's happening in the financial services area, what's happening in um, in in the world in general, right? Uh, demographics, customer preferences, uh, social uh, preferences, etc. Right. Uh, so a lot of research, um, a lot of time is spent on researching um, in the primary markets that we operate in, and in other markets that we probably are not operating right now, but you know we're still interested in, right? So a lot of research is accumulated and fed into our planning process, right? So. Um, and, and planning is something, uh, you know, uh, Fidelity uh, senior leadership uh, does on a frequent basis. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so the key ingredient, apart from, say, the business goals, et cetera, uh, that we mandate, that we uh, feed into this process is the research, right? Research and experimentations. These two areas are, in, you know, uh, are, of, are of importance and we have dedicated um, you know, org structures to do that. So let me let me just you know <laughs> say that and see how how you want to respond. That uh, yeah, research is a big ingredient of um, of how our planning happens, and we spend a lot of time on that, and that takes care of what's go going on around us. Yeah, I think it's an excellent um, in you know insight for the listeners that you need to have research of not just uh, the the market that you're currently in, but also keeping a track of the adjacent markets 
the newer market that you might be interested in. And even if you're not currently offering anything there, any offerings there, you still need to keep an eye on it and see when's the right time to probably enter or what, what is it that's something that you could offer. And that can only happen when you're constantly knowing about what's happening in that market. And research is the way to go about it. I think that's an excellent start for, uh, you know, any organization to keep a, keep a note of. Something that we've also learned uh, is that there's a special emphasis that comes in for, you know, for learning and development. So Chitra, a question to you in, in terms of uh, uh, what we have learned is that not only there's an LND, extensive LND that has been there uh, for, for, you know, associates and members, but also for senior leadership training to drive the innovation mandate. So the question to you is why so much focus on LND and especially even on the senior leadership uh, teams as well? Sure, Rishab. So um, at Fidelity, see, innovation is kind of uh, an integral part of our uh, culture, right? And we uh, focus a lot. I mean, uh, customer focus is top priority for us. And uh, we would like to really, uh, we think that innovation can really bring um, differentiated value for our customers. And with innovation, the possibilities are actually endless, right? So for this, we think the leaders, uh, they should be the torch bearers or the flag bearers. And uh, they should really be uh, enabling um, and uh, enabling an ecosystem. And uh, they should really help uh, challenge the status quo and uh, see how they can bring out innovative, creative ideas from the team, right? Towards that, what we do is we invest heavily in uh, leadership teams. We provide them access to um, multiple top um, international faculty. Uh, and uh, they focus a, a lot on uh, subjects like innovation, um, creative thinking, um, and uh, digital transformation, systemic thinking, design thinking, and so on. What we see is that, I mean, these programs are basically uh, a pretty long, three to four month uh, deep programs, deep immersive programs uh, that kind of really helps us build the muzzle of uh, um, innovation, right? And uh, what they do is once uh, these leaders take back uh, whatever learnings they have and they take it to the team and help the team, enable the team to come up with creative ideas. Not just this, We what we also do is we have a lot of, uh, uh, we do a lot of investment in enabling uh, a lot of uh, training programs and workshops for the rest of the associates as well to build their curiosity, to build their uh, design thinking and um, innovation skills, right? So um, uh, besides this, I would also say we uh, we do something called, um, uh, we give dedicated time for learning. Uh, that, is, uh, that is one of the good practice we have. And uh, on those days, we normally do not have meetings or anything like that scheduled. So that kind of encourages the associates to really spend time learning, upskilling, trying out new things, experimenting and so on. So all these things put together, I would say uh, it really helps us. So l &D is really helping us a lot in terms of uh, uh, the investment that we make in l and I would say it's helping us a lot in terms of uh, our innovation mandate, I would say. I think you have, you have briefly touched upon the uh, and given that and have given us a brief overview in terms of what you are doing right from you know the top leadership level to that of a member level in terms of different programs curriculums collaboration with multiple organizations and faculties and in, in in driving that mindset and leadership top leadership team being the you know the torch bearers of driving innovation mandates in in the organization. Uh, well, you've given that brief overview as well. Just wanted to understand if you would want to touch upon uh, how has that resulted in some sort of a um, you know tangible impact that you would have probably seen that you would want to cover in terms of how has this extensive focus on LD helped you in in uh, an innovation journey, a testimonial or uh, an example that you would want to call out so that it's easier for our listeners to grasp that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, see, I would say our innovation journey has been pretty successful so far, uh, thanks to all the, I mean, one of the key contributing factors, we would say, is uh, the l &D, right, uh, is our focus on l and uh, See, to give a perspective, we have a platform that kind of enables end-to-end -end, uh, um, innovation, right, end-to-end -end, uh, innovation for our associates. And where we see that uh, more than 50% of our associates, they either participate in either the ideation side of things or on the implementation side of things, right? So that's the level of contribution where the associates, 
everyone is able to really jump in because of all the um, the interest, the curiosity, and uh, uh, the experimentation they want to do. They're able to really jump in and uh, uh, help us with this, right? And uh, I mean, we also have um, a crowdsourcing uh, platform where uh, the associates can really kind of uh, join in experiment the new skills they have learned and experiment new ideas and everything. We have also seen that a very good participation, thousands of hours the associates have put in, uh, which definitely shows that, um, uh, I mean, the uh, the the curiosity that uh, ha that is on the associates' mind is kind of reflected on some of the things that we see on uh, the platforms, the participation rates, and so on, right? Um, so those are some of the things that I would say. Um, we have several ideas that has gone from uh, ideation to implementation. Um, see, uh, one idea I would say is a, is a, is a platform, is an uh, application solution that we kind of built for uh, uh, novice customers, simplifying the investing for them, offering them a fully uh, digital experience and crypto trading and so on, right? And many of the, uh, right from the prototyping, the UX design to the research to everything, I mean, the teams very actively participated and they were fully involved uh, in coming up with uh, uh, the whole uh, initial prototyping uh, during that phase, right? So um, we have several other products uh, uh, like this, I mean, where the ideas have gone through the full innovation journey. So. Yeah. Um, that uh, that's what I think the LND uh, the investment on LND has brought in um, at Fidelity. Thank you so much again for that uh, brief uh, description of how it is resulting into impact. Because I think um, a lot of GCCs, a lot of organizations uh, look at LND definitely look at LND as a starting point to to imbibe that culture. But getting you know impact, measuring impact that can be seen is something where a lot of GCs face a challenge and which is why the question was to see how can GC learn from their experience and probably build that as they build their innovation journeys and track up, you know, you know, find their innovation journeys as such. Um, as if one of the things that, that was called out in and that we learned uh, of the things that you're doing at Fidelity is that there are a lot of innovation mandates that you have revolved around customer centricity and customer context initiatives, something that you also touched upon, that that's your primary core goal that you're trying to solve. Now, my question to you on this particular thought process of being uh, of innovation mandates revolving around customer centricity and customer context is that um, as an organization, you work with, with a lot of customers, a lot of partners in the ecosystem and more, right? Anytime that you come across an idea uh, in terms of, um, or, a, or an innovation mandate that needs to be taken forward, how do you really identify which partner you would want to work with for a particular idea? Because you, you work with so many partners, even if they are in the same industry, same vertical. So how is it that you really identify and find a partner for any innovation mandate or an idea that you have? Um, yeah, so, uh, uh, you know, we definitely work with a lot of partners, um, whether they are, uh, you know, technology partners or, uh, consulting partners, right? Um, you know, we uh, are domain experts, right? We we definitely learn, uh, you know, work with many of them. Um, you know, we actively, um, you know, leadership actively engages with, um, you know, geographic centers that have high level of innovation going on, right? So Silicon Valley, like the uh, on the Europe side, a few uh, areas. Uh, Asia, et cetera, right? Uh, Asia specific, specifically because, you know, digital adoption is so high here and, uh, you know, success of digital products also is pretty high here. Uh, so there's always a focus on how that's happening, you know, in uh, geographies like Asia, et cetera. So, um, yeah, we definitely try to, in you know, uh, imbibe a lot of outside in, right? Uh, we do that. Um, and internally also, we have huge investments on analytics, right? Uh, there is so much of customer data um, that is analyzed, right? Usage patterns, uh, you know, what features are used, what features are not used, um, you know, what uh, what flows are successful, what flows are abandoned midway, et cetera, right? So a lot of insights are drawn from how customers use our uh, products. 
Um, we have uh, design labs and workshops to see, um, you know, again, what makes a product engaging and uh, what not, right? So uh, we try to, you know, it's it's normally a, a, you know, a combination of these two, outside and inside, um, that makes things um, work. Um, and and another thing is we have we have been uh, inviting a lot of thought leaders to come and speak uh, at our place, right? Um, uh, I mean, globally, I would say, right? Um, so thought leaders on um, customer engagement, customer focus, et cetera, right? So uh, open to absorbing a lot from outside. Uh, but in terms of partnership, many partners, I mean, I can't name, um, many partners are there, uh, both on technology side as well as on the consulting side. Oh, sure. uh, something on the similar lines that, that was also called out was that there's a lot of emphasis that's there on um, democratization of innovation in terms of um, ideas, processes that you have and making it more and more employee-led. Uh, uh, what's the thought process of making the entire innovation process more democratization? Do you face any challenges in terms of that process? Um, because you still want innovation processes, uh, the different mandates that you're running to drive, to move towards driving tangible outcomes. So yeah. what's your uh, thought process on that particular aspect? Yeah, yeah so quick, uh, you know, um, view on our journey at India. We are, we are 20 years in India. And when we started, um, it was all uh, all about learning what Fidelity do does, et cetera, right? But very soon we put in a platform for capturing um, you know, incremental innovation, right? Um, that, that's the first thing that we did. Uh, we had a process and a platform to capture incremental innovation. So uh, associates could submit their ideas, work on it. Um, there was a financial due diligence that was done to see how much that aid, uh, idea, you know, benefited the business, et cetera. So that is a well-oiled process right now. I mean, anytime you come to Fidelity, we can just, you know, quickly look at the dashboard and say, how many ideas to date for the uh, to, uh, year to date are there? Uh, you know, what's the effort spent? What's the effort saved? What's the financial benefit out of that, right? So that uh, central process is there, uh, which is which has been which was which has been a great enabler uh, to seed more innovation, right? So we 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 um, largely called it the small eyes, right? That that's uh, incremental innovation, and then. Um, as we matured as an organization, say uh, seven years, eight years, ten years into um, our uh, being in India, we started saying, "Hey, what about the bigger eyes, right? The big eyes. How, how can we go after some transformational um, ideas?" And and Chitra alluded to one such product for novice investors, right? That came out of India, um, India, India research and India thinking, right? So uh, then we moved to this big eyes, etc. And, and around the time, you know, each business unit was fairly mature and somewhere ahead, somewhere, say, um, a, a little behind, et cetera, in, in their maturity curve. So that was the time where we said, you know, centrally we will enable innovation, but the business units know best what to go after, right? They know their objectives. They know their key, um, you know, uh, key pillars for the years uh, ahead of them, et cetera. So uh, the business units were free to kind of uh, go ahead with their big guys, their big ideas, et cetera, right? And uh, what... What we help uh, centrally is to is to see how we could help uh, them reach the key decision makers uh, to see to evaluate that idea and see if it makes it to the backlog or not, right? Or does it have to go back um, to the drawing board um, and you know we spend a little more time on that and you know kind of uh, make it stronger? So um, yeah, democratization has happened as we evolved. Democratization has happened, um, and uh, centrally we just enable. Uh, but the business units run with it. One thing that I wanted to call out was uh, even on an, on the LND that Chitra referred. I mean, we have some programs for senior um, leaders, emerging leaders, etc. And one of the things there is an action learning project, right? Where it is it is sourced as a a, a problem statement or a, a, an opportunity statement from a business leader. Uh, we would source some of these uh, you know opportunities and you know, give it to these uh, batch of. Uh, people who are going through this innovation classes, right? And they would come back with uh, an outcome, uh, you know, a business case, et cetera. So, um, so democratization, democratization has happened as you've evolved, uh, to put it. Uh, uh, I think that's an important um, takeaway as well, that at any point in time, of course, as you work through the journey of an innovation, you need to have that clear understanding and visibility in terms of the, the thing that you called out of having a dashboard, which clearly states that these are the ideas, this much amount has been 
that has been spent these are the time that has been saved more importantly uh, having that financial understanding as well of uh, vetting the ideas business ideas that is being there i think that really adds value in terms of the process the hierarchy that's been created in terms of a central business unit and then having multiple you know views leading their innovation programs uh, building on the same lines chitra uh, something that pasi also touched upon right where there is uh, there is a central program central innovation program that is there but there are multiple bus leading their own innovation programs and uh, uh, a classic an example of you leading a particular program that was that was taken from india to global right so uh, just a question here to you is that every bu has their own understanding and has their own vision in terms of what's next has their own and because uh, it's a, it's a great thing to know that there are the individual specific innovation programs being run at every bu level what i wanted to understand is how does this eventually come together and form and align with the overall central innovation program as a whole yeah sure so as uh, asif quoted uh, we do have a central team that kind of uh, runs the innovation agenda and uh, they also enable the innovation platforms they bring in outside pers- outside in perspectives and they uh, connect with the academy of uh, uh, the the startup ecosystem and everything so when it comes to the uh, uh, the bu aligned innovation teams see each bu we have very diverse business units and each bu has its own innovation charter they have their own priorities and it's basically a subset of the enterprise priorities but they do have their own at any point in time they do have their own priorities that they need to focus on so the innovation charter for each of the bus could be slightly different from the other bus depending on what they are focusing on for their clients at that point in time right so uh, while it does differ um it definitely aligns to the oh, i mean the overall innovation agenda aligns to the strategic objectives of the organization um and also uh, all of this are brought together in the using the innovation platform that is simply enabled by the innovation team right so uh, the process the framework followed uh, um, it could be slight i mean the process could be a process and framework followed by all the bus they kind of align with the overall um, framework that is set by the central team that way all the teams are brought together and uh, i would also say that uh, although we have multiple business units there is a lot of cross sections uh, that we have where the the bus kind of work together to be able to give a unified experience to our end clients so that way the innovation although it centrally it it comes from a particular business unit it does involve um uh, solicit i mean it solicits ideas buy in from the other business units as well for us to be able to get the idea uh, to the next level and kind of put in a, a, put in a, 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 an mvp or a, or a, a prototype um, out to the business users and then out to the clients right so that way uh, while individual bus they have their own innovation charter they all come together to be able to um, uh, deliver the uh, right solutions for our customers plus they also align with the overall framework that we have centrally so that's how all of these things uh, come together rishab i think that's a so excellent input in terms of having different innovation mandates that are running across each of the bus and all of that still constitute to the overall strategic um, you know thought process in the mindset that that's there at an organization level right uh, and i think that that would just enable not just the cross collaboration that you called out between the views but it also enables every view to move forward now something that was also talked about by asif as well that there was one such program that was taken from india to that to to being taken at a global level right so right. just want to understand that when you're driving these innovation mandates at a bu level at one bu level or across bu levels which would constitute at a strategic level uh, when when you go up that way right uh, are you also looking at innovation mandates being focused as to what is it something that you're driving here locally that can be taken globally is that the mindset that is now been actively pursued because there's already one such program that has been taken in that direction so any thoughts any insights in that right see uh, this is uh, the way we operate is that um any programs uh, i mean it's a very transparent culture and so any programs that are locally run uh, we do seek inputs suggestions from all our partners across different 
across different business units across geographies right so any uh, local innovation local um, idea that has sprung um, once it takes uh, uh, once, it, once it takes form and shape it is definitely brought to the global arena and one more thing i would say is that um, our gcc uh, focuses primarily on us clientele so uh, many of the solutions that i mean the solutions that we build are focused towards the us market and uh, um, uh, that particular market segment right so our solutions whatever we build we have we work very closely with our partners globally to be able to really uh, uh, take it to the next levels uh, and and make it finally a, a nice product or a nice feature for our end customers right so any idea that we do uh, it's a, it's very uh, imperative that it can be taken global uh, at some point in time so that's our end state that's that's the i wouldn't call it end state that is definitely our north star in terms of uh, how we take things uh, global and i think that's an excellent north star to have to to just motivate the individuals and associates in terms of fostering that that culture of innovation because uh, that these these examples and this the the fact that it's it's a transparent process as you called out makes it even easier for individuals to visualize visualize how their journey is going to look like and more importantly the the point and the the process that you called out of seeking inputs from different partners across geographies that just makes it culturally very rich in terms of how do you really look at evaluating and building a particular product or driving an innovation mandate right uh well we've talked a lot of uh, the th- the thought process that that follows in an internal to an organization that you're doing internally across collaboration with bus and partners uh a, a major challenge that we have always noticed uh and this is a question to you as if that when we are eng- when uh, engaging with a broader ecosystem bfsa organizations often encounter this challenge of sharing experiences sharing details without really divulging you know sensitive regulatory information because there's just too many things that come in uh, with bfsi organization right so uh, any guidance or recommendation inputs insights that you have noticed that how do you manage this balance effectively uh, because you still have to collaborate with the larger ecosystem without with the regulatory information mind uh, check place in mind yeah that that is true uh, that is true uh, that um, you know uh, personally identifiable information pii i would call for customers and lot of our critical information that is something that uh, has to be closely guarded um, so when you work with uh, startups uh, etc you know there has to be mechanisms in place to uh, make sure that you can still collaborate so um, you know globally i think a lot of things have been put in place like uh, you have um, you know mass data or a uh, different set of data that is uh, you know not compromising on our uh, you know confidentiality um, we have uh, you know kind of test regions that can be you know uh, separated from our main network so that you could have experiments done out of that um, um or or you could have you know we could, we have some sandboxes that uh, that you can work on etc so there are mechanisms in which we have been able to st- still engage you know um startups and other uh, partners to work with us right um that is one thing that i would say which is which is in place and there's a way to work around i mean there's it's not a show stopper in in that sense uh, and this is from a global uh, you know sense um but uh, you know when it comes to say engaging with startups locally and and uh, which we do also right sometimes obviously the regulations are itself different between say what you have in uh, say our part of the world versus say uh, say the us etc so uh, that is one consideration right uh, maybe we had a, we have an excellent solution here but sometimes it's not the same set of uh, regulations or guidelines that are operating say in in the primary market so uh that is some that's another thing that we have to be conscious of as we uh, you know look for partners or uh, take some good ideas forward right so um but all, all, all the more i think uh, what is helping is by being present in asia right we're able to get the um you know get a diverse thinking of how how companies startups solve problems right um and that is something we're able to feed it into uh, our our you know um our primary organization and uh, see how that 
you know leads into our planning process right so uh, yeah maybe you cannot do a direct lift and shift but a great idea here uh, can be you know replicated in a different context when you take it back to the uh, us right so there are ways in which you can work on this but i think uh, we 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 are generally open to like i said in the past also right uh, you know taking absorbing from outside is something that we have been more and more open to um, as we evolved i think i think that's that's extremely important for any bfsi organization for that matter is to is to be a little uh, you know open in terms of how we can uh, make certain changes which are still allowed in that sense because an idea is an idea right it's just how do we fit that idea with the regulatory guidance that are there that still serves the purpose because every situation every ecosystem and uh, parameters that are there would differ but it's the bottom line that we're trying to solve for which as you also called out in the beginning is to serve our customers better with a differentiated offering right so uh, sticking true to the to the core that we have with an idea that's a great idea but just changing those parameters and you know adapting to the situations would would really work for the fsi organization i think that's a great insight uh, for you know for gc to note um chitra uh, a cup a a somewhat similar question that also came in to us from the listeners and something similar that you touched up on in the different insights that you have shared so far is that there's a a lot of focus there's a lot of uh, extensive focus that you do in terms of extensive l&d support that's provided to the top leadership team and everyone else in the organization as well alongside that you also just now talked about having that transparency and guiding individuals associates at every bu level and at a grassroots level and driving innovation at a grassroots level uh so the question that also came into us uh was that while we are looking at innovation uh you know at a top leadership level at a grassroots level what do you feel uh how should we really approach innovation to initiate uh should it be top to bottom should it be bottom to top should there be more grassroots level innovation should there be more uh senior le- leadership level or something entirely else is what we would like to know from you yeah uh, so the approach that uh, uh, has worked for us is the innovation uh, in our uh, fidelity is kind of uh, uh, democratized i would definitely say while the senior leaders they play a very key role in enabling innovation fostering the ecosystem kind of helping the team navigate through the whole thing the process is completely democratized um, and as if also touched upon this point earlier few more things i would like to add is that um see uh, the platform that we have that we spoke about earlier the innovation platform that we have um what happens is the ideas uh, that the, the for the business challenges that we post on the platform um uh, the uh, anyone would be able to submit ideas to solve the business challenge or the business problem they have and what we do is um uh, for the i mean after the smes on the particular subject area they provide guidance they enrich the idea they enhance the idea and provide right guidance to the ideators what happens is all these ideas are kind of posted on uh, the the portal where all the associates they get to see the kind different kind of ideas that are coming out and they normally they are able to either upvote uh saying hey this idea kind of resonates with uh, my thought process and this idea sounds uh, good to me and all those things so uh, another way of democratization is where all the associates are able to really lean in and contribute to the overall innovative innovative ideas that are coming up from multiple corners and they're able to really uh, uh, see some of the ideas they they are looking at uh, complete the journey from uh, right from the start to uh, implementation right so that is one way where we democratize the whole thing so to your uh, question uh, we definitely look at it from the grassroots level uh, while the leaders they are very strong enablers um, of the overall innovation process but uh, thanks so much uh, something that you touched upon uh, in terms of democratization idea which brings me to a question to asif as well that uh, you know individuals post their ideas then eventually gets maybe an upvote uh, by different members that this is an idea that i resonate with that meets the thought process and should be probably continued but at at a at a sector level for example or at a business level right while a particular idea may have gotten um while may still st- sound a lot relevant m- you know meets the eye with a lot of um, different individuals who want to continue this how do you really evaluate 
whether that idea has a true potential and criticality in terms of taking it forward from the stage that it already has to that of a you know a business level and more support system to come in yeah uh, uh, our processes to be honest they are uh, really strong uh, where multiple stakeholders they provide inputs for the ideas they vet the ideas uh, through the uh, uh, through the uh, idea life cycle right so what happens is as soon as the ideas come in uh, there are smes who kind of really help as i said they kind of look at the idea ask the right kind of questions to the ideator to enhance their thinking process and to ensure uh, uh, the idea gets enriched and enhanced uh, and it it moves to the next level right and once these ideas are kind of uh, uh, taking uh, they have taken a good form and shape these are also presented to the uh, the business users um, of the respective space so that they also vet uh, the ideas and see how um, whether the idea has the true potential so uh, i would say the way it operates is there is a very robust feedback mechanism uh, we also have an innovation innovation panel which kind of reviews the ideas and asks the right kind of questions so the the robust feedback mechanism from all these uh, groups kind of helps uh, uh, helps the idea uh, to get enriched uh, or if the right questions are asked and if we find any similar um, idea that has already been done or we have a different solution that could be done uh, with this feedback the idea gets refined and uh, that's how we address this uh, uh, so, yeah and i can just add a little here is that uh, one of course for the incremental ideas we have the process we have a portal etc that can happen for uh, bu led ideas again like chitra said there is that robust robust process uh, that um, uh, the ideas go through and ultimate uh, you know destination for an idea would be that it is accepted by the decision make the product leaders backlog right i mean you know it is an approved investment going forward right and the third thing that associates have uh, access to is um, almost an internal uh, startup accelerator kind of uh, program that is available centrally globally centrally anybody from any any part of the geography can approach them uh, with an idea and they would take an idea uh, and help you create, move that idea into uh, a business case um, and Uh, worthy of a pitch to an investment committee right mm-hmm. um and if if it goes through i mean that's the stage that's the first stage if it goes through then you get investments from a central pool also right so global central pool right so that way uh, so it's have multiple ways in which they can take an idea uh, to uh, to a reality in a sense right and i think that's that's e- equally important that different set of ideas at different stages get have different ways to be moved forward Uh, because there's no one shoe fits size all in terms of having just one method approach to solve innovation because innovation cannot really have uh, just one particular approach in that sense uh, we're almost at the uh, you know uh, uh, at the hour of uh, closing the overall engagement so just one final question uh, that i would hear from both of you individually is uh, we spoke a lot in great length in terms of the need to innovate in terms of the different ways and approaches that you have the transparency that you brought in um the, the focus is always there when you're starting your journey from to go from 0 to 1 but how do you really go from 1 to 100 is something that i would want your insight so uh what's the next phase of growth looking like uh um, to both of you the question is to both of you chitra what do you go sure so uh what we see is that um see we have uh, we have matured in our innovation journey and we have uh, come a pretty good way uh, in our innovation journey what we see is that with the kind of technological uh, uh, advances that we see out in the market um, disruptive technologies i would say right from uh, uh, your chat gpt to your generative ai to so many other things uh, we definitely want to uh, want to see how some of these disruptive technologies could really take us uh meet the expectations of the uh, evolving needs of the customer so i think uh, uh, adoption of some of these technologies is something that we would we can uh, definitely look for in the upcoming years that's going to be really transformative uh, for providing a differentiated client experience so that would be uh, 
uh, of course, we would definitely do all the due diligence. Uh, but at the same time, we think there is a lot of potential in uh, adopting some of these disruptive technologies and provide a differentiated uh, experience to our customers. Yeah. Thank you, Chitra. Asif, what according to you is the... Yeah, what I would like to add is that, uh, Fidelity, uh, again, just... Uh, uh you know manifestation of their investment right i mean we have a couple of um you know they're available publicly uh the fcat organization which is i mean the site is f catalyst uh publicly it's available there's fidelity labs that's again you know a lot of information publicly available i mean these are again global central entities with a mandate to drive innovation uh looking at emerging technologies and uh disrupt the changes that are say five years out um, and and we are trying to uh, see how that might you know, impact our uh, business, right? So there is a lot of um, you know support and investment to um, such transformative say changes in the future, and hence uh, we have incubators that look at say quantum, we look at uh, of course blockchain and crypto apart from um, AI, etc. Right? So. There are, uh, I mean, and, and anybody interested can have a look at uh, these publicly available information, right, uh, about our investments, about what we are doing in these areas and how we are trying to help our customers meet their goals, um, you know, like I said, uh, with, with the right products and the right, um, you know, in, uh, experience. So uh, that's how I would say, uh, Rishabh. All right. Thank you so much, Asif. Thank you so much, Chitra, for being with us for us you know, taking time out from your schedule and walking us through and giving us some really insightful takeaways in terms of the efforts that you're putting in, the extensive focus on leadership, uh, on learning and development for leadership team, top leadership as well as associates to drive that, um, you know, thought process of leadership being the torchbearers in driving innovation mandates, uh, how there's a different approach to every idea that's coming in, democratization of every associate's getting a say in the ideas that that's moving forward and more importantly having you know finance vetting the ideas having a dashboard that keeps a track of you know the ideas that have been moved forward the time that's spent the time that's saved and there's always that thought process of what's next so thank you so much asif chitra for being with us for walking us through and giving us these insightful takeaways uh, and once again many congratulations to you and fidelity for being for winning the great place to innovate award for the program year 2023 Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Rishabh and uh, Zinov. Thank you so much, Asif. With that, uh, uh, dear, attend dear members, we have now come towards the end of this particular webinar. I hope that there were multiple takeaways, great insights that you all were able to take away. In case you have any questions, in case you would like to know about us, about the different frameworks, about the different innovation mandates that we, that we run, please feel free to reach out to in events at the ratezinov.com. These are our social media handles. Uh, Thank you so much once again for being a part of this webinar on a Friday morning. It was great hosting the scene. Thank you so much. Take care.